Hey, what's going on, guys? It's Brian Jack with Simple Men's Comics, and we are back with another special episode of that Simple Men's Comics and Friends podcast. I say special. This is one that's near and dear to my heart. There's two things I love. I love comic books, and I love the armed forces and first responders. This is going to be a special episode concentrating on all of those things. We have some great guests with us tonight. We have Nolan from Outcast Comics. We also have Brad from Crossroads Therapy Farms, as well as his partner, Tom. So we're going to talk a little bit about comics, and then we're also going to talk about a nonprofit charity that helps out those armed forces and first responders. We're going to start with that right now with Nolan from Outcast Comics. Why don't you tell the viewers a little bit about yourself, a little bit about Outcast Comics. Hey, Brian. For one, first and foremost, thanks for having me on, man. Um, so Outcast Comics is just that. We are the comic book outcasts in the world. Um, we deal in uh, exclusives and signature opportunities and grading. We are CBCS facilitator and CBCS certified dealership. Um, what that means for you guys is I will travel everywhere for you to get you guys the signatures you need or you want. doesn't matter. Um, but we do also do a lot of work with the nonprofit organization, Crossroads Therapy Farms. Um, we have raised quite a bit of money for them over the past couple of years uh, to help them get going and, and everything else like that. Brad is a good friend of mine, and this organization is near and dear to my heart as well. So what we are doing is trying to help them out a little bit more. But before we go into that, let's touch base with Brad. That way he can talk to you guys a little bit about what the organization is and what they're about. Hello, I'm Brad Fulfs. Uh, I'm the founder and president of Crossroad Therapy Farms. Uh, it's C-R-T-F-I for short. Um, well, the reasons why I started this nonprofit and that came dear to my heart was uh, I suffer from post and back, back on May 22nd, 2007. I lost two of my close friends uh, to an IED blast. Uh, I did amphibious assault, uh, which is also known as am tracking. They died April 26, 2007. Um, Corporal Celestine and Corporal DiGiovanni. Uh, for many years uh, after I was hospitalized off and on for about a year uh, after my blast injury, um, I decided to go back to school in 2009, where eventually I ended up going to The Ohio State University and getting a, obtaining a master's degree in social work um, and wanted to work with veterans. Um, so after I was working uh, at Vance Outdoors during the time I was going to my master's program, uh, two of my coworkers actually committed suicide. One's name was um, Steve. I won't give last name for identifying reasons, but uh, also uh, another guy was named Andrew. Uh, Steve was a Vietnam veteran, and Andrew actually uh, worked with the Ohio National Guard. And when I went to his memorial, his dad was a pastor and had stopped being a pastor for three years and ended up uh, giving his son's eulogy, which really was kind of surprising to me how he had the strength and the endurance to do that after losing his son to uh, suicide. And so that really spoke to me. And I promised his dad and his mom that day because something just hit me and it was like, I need to do a therapy farm. Well, I'm a city kid. I'm from Portland, Oregon originally. So I had no clue what I was going to do. You know, how, how do I run a therapy farm when I'm a city kid? I never grew up on a you know, farm. And so I promised them that day, I said, I'm going to do something that's going to be impactful. And I'm going to make a difference for these suicide rates among veterans and first responders, because it's such an epidemic right now. Um, I mean, uh, we, we have roughly the 2009 National Veteran Suicide Prevention Annual Report by the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs estimates that there's 6,139 veterans per year that commit suicide, um, as well as the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services uh, Administration called SAMHSA um, says that there's 1,027 current and retired U.S. firefighters that have suicidal ideations. Um, the Ru uh, Rutterman Family Foundation says that suicide rates are roughly 18 out of 100,000 firefighters commit suicide, and 11 to 17 out of 100,000 police officers have committed suicide. Um, and that's on general 
general population, there's only 13 out of 100,000 that commit suicide. So that's pretty significant rates. And so back on September 16, 2019, I actually formulated the nonprofit and went through and got all the registration done through Ohio, um, as well as we just now applied for our tax exemption on June 6th of this year. Um, so just this month, uh, we finally got our tax exemption uh, application submitted. And so we're waiting for approval, but as law states, we can go ahead and uh, be acting as a nonprofit in the current situation. So Crossroad Therapy Farm's mission is helping to create new paths for those who serve others while creating a safe place for those who have been uh, unknowingly vulnerable to traumatic circumstances. We will provide them with a way of coping with any mental health or risk factors towards suicide. Everyone deserves a new path in life, new way in life. Um, our vision is uh, we will run a therapy farm for those who are suffering from mental health or possible at risk uh, for suicide. Uh, we'll run a program. We'll, it will be two weeks long uh, with 12 to probably about 12 uh, participants. Um, during that time, we hope to serve 156 to 312 clients every year. Um, and that will stop at least 6 to 20% uh from those committing suicide which right now because we're in lo one location isn't a huge impact but it's still making a difference and it's about making that difference it's about giving people a purpose right and giving them options to figure out how to eradicate the suicide rate and so our program uh we have two programs actually called faith faith is a friendly assistance in traumatic healing or other one is called Renewed, Redirecting Exposures Needing Empowerment with Educational Development Programs. The way that our program will work is phase one through five. The first day, phase one, will be in the dark is what it's called. And pretty much what it is is just meeting people where they're at and teaching them how to be self-sustaining in a pandemic or even like survival settings, right? Um, phase two, is called Lifeline, and that's overcoming obstacles and learning how to work as an individual and as a team to overcome certain obstacles that you may face in life. But uh, we have a unique way of demonstrating these obstacles, uh, which we will, uh, if, you, if you come to our program and you're a veteran or first responder, you'll get to experience. Um, and then phase three is finding the light. Uh, and that incorporates farming, agriculture, sustainability, and uh, you know, learning about different things that may happen on a farm. Um, phase four uh, is moving to greener pastures, uh, also incorporating farming um, and different things that you need to know about farming. Uh, phase five is becoming a provider for self and family. And that when, uh, you know, when you retire from the military or police department, uh, you lose that sense of purpose and that brotherhood. And it, I know for myself, uh, I, I missed it. You know, I, I couldn't find it and I was doing all kinds of things to try to find it. Um, I was very much a, an adrenaline seeker, uh, doing a lot of risky behaviors. Uh, I'm sure some people can relate to that who, who have been veterans of first responders. And um, so this, we give you another option um, through educational experience and learning different things, which I won't go into grave detail at this juncture, but uh, it will definitely give you a sense of purpose and it will give you a s essentially a resilience into learning other things that if you can no longer do those fields, you can continue on doing something and being self-supporting. Um, by making your own self-determinations and stuff like that. Um, so that's, that's the gist about Crossroad Therapy Farms. Um, our goals is helping others find themselves, helping them learn new things, working therapies through the two different programs, and there will be a lot more to come. We're always expanding, always growing, and also always looking for board members uh, for our nonprofit therapy farm. Um, and we 
will only have board members who have either been in the military or a first responder because we want it to be ran by peers. And uh, so now I'm gonna go ahead and introduce Tom. Uh, Tom is one of my brothers and he is a chaplain uh, with a police department and he has worked with many first responders so he can speak from what he's seen and witnessed as a chaplain. Thank you, Brad. And uh, thank you, Brian, too, for uh, inviting me onto your program. Yeah, a lot of what Brad said is the truth. Um, and it's really interesting, I'm sure, I don't know the military side, but about 1% of the population actually can apply for a police academy or a sheriff's department. And of those 1%, only about 50% can actually make it to the end. So that's a very small amount of people that make it, both male and female, and they suffer from PTSI. Actually, they're changing the term to PTSI, which means an injury, because it actually is an injury. Your brain actually gets injured because your brain is trying to figure out what to do in this traumatic situation. But yeah, I, I still am a first responder. I'm search and rescue. My specialty is ropes and part of the Swift Water Rescue Team in El Dorado County. I'm also a law enforcement chaplain in the county, commissioned through the Sheriff's Department. And uh, we work with uh, two counties and a city police department. So I work with police and deputies. And also we work with fire. So I get to touch a lot of people. I'm also privileged to be able to work with um, a FEMA chaplaincy program. It's a national chaplaincy program. So national disasters I get called in. So needless to say, I've seen a lot, I've experienced a lot, and really everything Brad said is the truth. It really devastates us. Any kind of uh, post-traumatic stress syndrome, syndrome really affects us, whether you wanna call it disorder or an injury. The biggest thing is recovery, and that's what Brad's program is all about, is recovery, getting to the root of the problem so we can figure out as first responders that have been injured or being affected by those post-traumatic stresses, how to change it from a stressful situation into a growth situation. So if we can change it from post-traumatic stress disorder or injury to post-traumatic stress growth, I'm totally up for that. So this is really near and dear to my heart. And thanks so much for Brad asking me along because from the other side, my closest to military was family. I have retired military and police in my family. And I personally was also a defense contractor. So I've been affected by a fair amount myself. So I can totally relate to what you said. And um, I'll leave it there. It's just, I'm here to help as much as I can from my experience and my help with first responders. Well, obviously, you know, the things that Brad's talking about and Tom that you just piggybacked on are definitely, um, they're definitely unfortunate uh, realities that I know uh, many of us have heard about as uh, so many of our loved ones have come home from overseas. And uh, I myself come from a military family. Brian is a very proud U.S. Marine. And, uh, you know, it, I think that these are the types of things that, I love seeing the military community, the first responder community, um, reaching out to help each other, to help help itself, um, to help each other heal when you come home. Um, and then something else that really has to make me feel good, because we talk on our channel about integrity and community, and that community where it often gets um, overlooked, and it gets kind of lumped into being about subscriber base or something like that. And really what it's about is that we end up forming a, a community, a bond, a brotherhood within this hobby that we all have. And so many people within this hobby, it, whether it's themselves being uh, members of the military or have a military background, our family members are affected by these things that we're talking about. And, uh, you know, I want to kick it over to Nolan, who is a member of the comics community with Outcast Comics, who is doing something to help support Brad's cause. Hey, thanks, man. Um, so what we're doing right now um, is live on my website, outcastcomics.com. Um, I will actually make a header post for it on the website. 
but um, there is going to be 100 mystery bundles. In those mystery bundles, there are six books. One of those six books in every single bundle will be signed by the, uh, by the artist with a COA from my company. Um, and that mystery bundle is, again, $100, but that's including shipping and portions of the proceeds are going to be donated to Crossroads Therapy Farms to help out these men and women. Um, if you guys do have any questions at all about anything, whether it be the Crossroads Therapy Farms, whether it be what, we, uh, what my affiliation is with this company, with this organization, feel free to ask. Yes, I am a board member on this company. Um, I was a first responder for many years uh, in the fire department and people don't realize what kind of stuff these men and women deal with every single day on a volunteer basis. Um, they think it's okay. Yep. We're going to go to this structure fire. Yep. We're going to go to this rollover crash. They don't tell you what they see. They don't tell you what they deal with. They don't tell you the afterthoughts that are in the back of their minds every single day, day in and day out of what they could have done or what they should have done or, or anything that could have happened differently. So as much help as we can possibly help these people out with, these men and women, the, the more we can help them out, the better off we are going to be. Um, so not only is there a way to help um, this organization through buying the um, a mystery bundle, but there's also a way to donate directly to the organization itself. Uh, CrossroadsTherapyFarms.org um, does have a donate tab on there. You can go right to the website. If you're not into comics, you can go right to the website and donate to them as well. So, so yeah, and we'll put links to Outcast Comics and Crossword Therapy Farms in the description of this video as well as put them up on the screen here right now. But also, like I said at the beginning, this is one that was a special episode to me because these two communities often come together that I don't think a lot of people realize, like Jack said, all of us kind of grew up in a military family. Uh, both my grandparents were submariners. My father's army retired colonel. My brother's army retired lieutenant colonel. Younger brother is currently active duty down there doing medical recruiting. I was the one that chose the best service and went Marine Corps, of course, but we always give each other a hard time. And we're not even touching on the fact of all the other first responders. We, Drew Zucker, a great friend of the channel, artist for Canto, he's an EMT in New York. But I've had friends that were in the Marine Corps that have got out that are Norfolk, Virginia SWAT team or Newport News Police Department. So there's a lot of first responders there, and this community kind of weaves in and out when my, both my brothers were over in Iraq and Afghanistan, I used to bundle up comics and ship them out to them. And you'd always get letters back about how much that helped or how much it kind of took their mind off of stuff and just escape reality for a second. So this is a chance to kind of give back also and help those people that are in need, help, help that nonprofit charity. So like I said, this is a, a cause that's near and dear to my heart. So I'm more than happy to support it. And then privileged to have you guys on the channel to talk about this. And like I said, we'll put link to both of those Outcast Comics and Crossword Therapy Farms in the description of this video. We'll also have this uh, episode up on simplemanscomics.com. The link will be in there as well. Yeah, I wanted to say real quick, uh, I forgot to mention that I was also in the Marine Corps there, Brian. So thank you for your service and Semper Fi. Hurrah. Yes, uh, but... Sorry. I didn't. I don't have a purple heart like you, so. <laughs> I, I was just one of those bullet sponges, <laughs> you know, <laughs> trap metal. That's all. Um, but no, I served um, June 2004 to April 2008. Um, was my service time, and I got out as an E4 corporal. So that's that's what I got out as. So I just wanted to add that. So I don't know. Yeah, not, uh, 94 to 99 for me. So I was in between in between those big. Um, <laughs> Big campaigns, uh, close to going to Bosnia a couple of times. But uh, either way, both my brothers were over there. My one brother did two, two tours in Iraq, two tours in Afghanistan. Another one did a tour in Afghanistan. Um, but ever since I got out, I've stayed close to it, like DOD contractor. I now do cybersecurity for the Marine Corps CH-53K program. But uh, 
and then Jack had has family. Like we said, if even if it's not military, someone can relate to a first responder, and someone can relate to. You don't ask them to tell stories, but every now and then, if they feel like they want to share some of those stories, or something that's just like what they go through, um, you can't possibly imagine. Nope. Yeah, a yeah, lot of I, them won't even talk about it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean that's a that's the interesting dynamic that we've had within within our family is watching. Um, you know, I have a uh, uncle who was a colonel with the Marines. Um, I have several cousins who joined the military uh, soon after high school, after 9-11. Um, and, you know, when they come home, there's definitely, there's a difference. There's a, um, um, an adjustment to life that you see. And it's hard because you want to help, but um, you oftentimes feel helpless. So it's great to know that there are places and communities um, and people that are looking uh, to kind of, help these people out who have done so much, especially some of them in my position, I sit and again, appreciate all that you guys do. And we're, and you mentioned first responders and we don't want to leave them out because we are in the middle of a pandemic. And I think a lot of times in the middle of this pandemic, we've all sat back and kind of imagined how it's affected us. And you mentioned Brian Drew Zucker, who's a friend of the channel. You know, there's so many first responders out there who have had to kind of keep business as usual in the middle of a time where the rest of us have kind of sat back and taken time off and, um, regrouped and social distance within our homes and there are first responders out there putting their lives on the line every day um, still still having to maintain law and order still having to um, protect us from fires as well as those first responders who are out there putting their lives on the line with the entire covid situation and uh, mm -hmm. you know so we gotta we gotta definitely uh put some love and support out there for those those people who are out there doing that. And again, you know, the comics community, um, there's a lot of mystery boxes out there. You guys know that uh, all out there in the Simpleman's Comics family. Um, we certainly sell one ourselves on a monthly basis to help support our channel. But, you know, there are a few mystery boxes you're gonna find that are gonna provide more value than the one that Nolan's putting out right now because yeah, the comics are great. And, you know, he like you said, he's a CBCS facilitator. So those signatures, that's as authentic as they come. But at the same point, uh, you're supporting an amazing cause with, from amazing people. And again, one that affects, uh, my guess would be most of you out there. Um, and uh, thank you so much uh, once again, Brian. And uh, thank you guys for having us on the show. Um, once again, like Nolan said, our website is crossroadtherapyfarms.org. We also have a Facebook page. Um, we're, we're looking to hopefully, we've been in talks about projecting to be open around August to run our first program. The end of August is what we're hoping for. Um, maybe early September, if worse comes to worse. Um, so we're looking to start moving boots off the ground, you know, and start moving this thing forward. Um, but even though we're not fully operational yet, if anybody, first responder, veteran, whatever, reach out to us on Facebook, reach out to our webpage. Um, like I said, I have a master's in social work, you know, um, I will do my best to, to talk to you about whatever you want to talk about and whatever you feel comfortable sharing, you can share it with me. I'll be an ear that will listen. So, uh, and if not, we have a chaplain right here who will listen as well. So yeah, contact either one of us. Thank you so much for that, Brian. Nope. Uh, thank you guys all for having us here. Thanks, Brian. So and another thing I want to do, is, uh, Brad, if this is all right with you. Brian, I'd actually like to invite you out to our first session. That's something I'd definitely be interested in. Definitely got to look into making that happen because I'm excited about it. Yeah, then you can tell us if there's, you know, things that need to change or whatever you think. Um, you'll, you'll be our guinea pig. <laughs> Sounds great. It'll be a good experience. It'll be all peers and mentoring, and it's going to be a pretty optional thing. There's, always, there's also something always about being around other people that have, you know, like you said, when that separation is always hard to find. Um, sure. I, I kind of was eased into it because I went into DOD contracting and stuff, so I was always kind of around some people you can relate to or share stuff with, but there's some people that separate and go into, way out into what we call civilian life or, you know, where it's hard to acclimate and get used to it again. It's a different different culture, but uh, either way, I want to thank all three of you guys for being on this episode of Superman's Comics and Friends. Again, we'll put all that social, all their links in the description of this video as well as this episode will be up on SimpleManscomics.com. Thank you guys for watching this. And for those listening on the podcast, make sure you head over to SimpleManscomics.com so you can get those links as well. This has been Brian and Jack with Simpleman's Comics and Friends. 
We'll see you guys in the next episode.